American Airlines finally took possession of its very first Airbus A321XLR. This jet can cross the Atlantic on narrow body economics. This aircraft can give American a fresh weapon against JetBlue and United. It rolled out of Airbus's Hamburg plant shiny and new, completed its test flights in March 2025, and even got its US registration as N300NY. But instead of landing in Dallas or Miami to show off to passengers, this $142 million machine was quietly ferried into storage in Chikia. Why is that? What's stopping American Airlines from putting its most anticipated jet to work? The dream of the A321 XLR. It was 2019 when Airbus shocked the aviation world by announcing the A321 XLR. Here was a narrow body plane that promised to fly farther than anything of its size had ever managed before. XLR stands for extra long range, and it lives up to the name. With a maximum range of about 4,700 nautical miles, the A321 XLR can connect cities like New York to Rome, Miami to London, or Dallas to Berlin, all without the need for a wide-body aircraft. That's a big deal. Airlines have long been stuck with two options for long-haul flying. This means they can send a massive twin-aisle jet across the Atlantic, or don't serve the route at all. The XLR offers a middle path. Long-haul performance on narrow-body economics, the aircraft is based on Airbus's already successful A321neo platform, but this comes with a bigger rear center fuel tank, more efficient engines, and tweaks to the landing gear to handle the extra weight. What does this mean in practice? Well, a plane that burns less fuel per seat than a Boeing 757 ever could, and with a passenger experience that feels far more modern. Airbus positioned it as the natural successor to the Boeing 757 and 767, two workhorses that once dominated U.S. transatlantic routes. But the problem is that both of them are now nearly extinct. American Airlines jumped at the opportunity. It placed an order for 50 aircraft in 2019. The plan was to use the XLR to fill in the gaps in its network. For decades, American has struggled with what the industry calls long, thin routes, which are journeys too long for domestic narrow bodies but not dense enough to justify a 787 or 777. For example, Philadelphia to Manchester, or Boston to Dublin. The 757 once thrived here, but with that fleet gone, American faced a hole in its map. The A321 XLR was supposed to solve it. Configured with 155 seats in three classes, it strikes a balance between efficiency and premium service. The standout feature is the new business class suites, 20 fully enclosed seats with sliding doors arranged in a one-by-one -one herringbone layout. For a narrow body, this is huge. Compare it to JetBlue's Mint Cabin, and the similarities are shocking. American finally had a product that could compete head-on with JetBlue in style and comfort. It's something it had lacked for years. If we consider the numbers, they make sense too. Operating costs per trip are far lower than wide bodies, opening up secondary routes that would otherwise lose money. And with fuel efficiency high on every airline's checklist, the XLR promised to cut costs at a time when oil prices remain unpredictable. So when the first airframe rolled out of Airbus's Hamburg facility in 2025, painted in American's polished livery, it represented the beginning of a new era. Reality, as it turned out, was about to deliver a much harsher truth. The delivery that wasn't American Airlines' first Airbus A321 XLR was supposed to be the crown jewel of its 2025 fleet strategy. Registered as N300NY, it completed its test flights in March that year. This proved the airframe was airworthy and ready for customer handover. By all accounts, everything seemed on track. Airbus had the plane polished, painted, and waiting at its Hamburg facility. The paperwork was done. The keys, metaphorically speaking, were handed over. And then they encountered the problem everyone was dreading. Instead of flying across the Atlantic to Americans' hubs in Dallas or Miami for a media splash, the jet quietly departed Europe for a far less glamorous destination. Storage in Czechia, a $142 million state-of-the-art aircraft, brand new, was parked and left idle. It was not a technical problem with the engines. It was not a regulatory grounding. It was not even about the fuselage itself. The issue was something so basic, so absurd, it left even habitual aviation watchers shaking their heads. The plane didn't have seats. American admitted the problem bluntly in a comment to Bloomberg. The aircraft would remain in Europe until ongoing seat supply chain challenges are resolved. There is a logistical nightmare behind that carefully worded statement. The A321XLR is not using standard off-the-shelf seats. 
Its premium cabins are fitted with custom-designed business class suites, complete with privacy doors. Manufacturing such high-spec interiors requires precision engineering, extensive safety testing, and coordination across multiple suppliers. The pandemic shattered supply chains across industries, and aviation seating has been one of the slowest to recover. Foam shortages, certification backlogs, and limited production slots have meant months-long waits. American, it seems, got caught in that bottleneck. The airline has refused to name the seat manufacturer, which makes us more curious. Was it a strategic partner who couldn't deliver on time? Was it a production line swamped by multiple airline orders? For now, all American admits is that the seats simply are not ready. And the problem is, even if the seats arrive tomorrow, they still need to be certified by the Federal Aviation Administration before passengers can sit in them. That certification process, which includes testing fire safety, crashworthiness, and weight distribution, takes months. So, while American Airlines can technically say it has taken delivery of its first A321XLR, in practice, the aircraft is unusable. Analysts are already skeptical about the airline's optimistic timeline, which suggests passenger service could begin by the end of 2025. That's the best case scenario. Realistically, with certification delays and production queues, we could be looking at 2026 before this plane carries paying passengers. The implications are huge here. American had planned to use the XLR to restore and expand transatlantic routes that were abandoned after the retirement of its 757s. With every month of delay, competitors gain an edge. We'll show you how in a moment. For now, let's look at a bigger problem. See, this is not just about one airplane. American Airlines has already faced delivery hiccups with its other aircraft. Together, these setbacks weaken its ability to compete internationally against Delta and United, both of whom have been more aggressive in securing wide-body capacity. The irony is brutal. The A321XLR was designed to give American flexibility, agility, and a competitive premium product. Instead, its very absence highlights how fragile modern aviation supply chains are. Let's put numbers to the impact. Each A321XLR configured for American is expected to carry 155 passengers. Assuming six transatlantic flights per week, that's nearly 5,000 passengers a month per aircraft who now won't be served. Multiply that across 50 orders, and the lost capacity is huge. Of course, not all those planes are due right away, but the scale of the delay disrupts route planning, revenue forecasts, and competitive positioning. And let's not forget the optics. Deliveries are usually PR gold mines for airlines. They bring press releases, photo shoots, and executives smiling beside gleaming fuselages. Instead, American's first A321XLR slipped into storage almost unnoticed. This is an embarrassment for a carrier that desperately needs a win. Passengers for now won't notice directly. They will just find fewer choices when booking transatlantic flights or higher fares on existing routes. But for American's leadership, this delay forces difficult choices. They can either lean harder on their aging wide-body fleet, scale back expansion, or wait patiently for Airbus and its suppliers to catch up. All the while, that $142 million jet sits grounded, waiting for seats. The A321XLR delays are frustrating enough, but American Airlines is juggling other serious challenges that make the situation even worse. American Airlines piling up problems. First, there are the Boeing 7879 deliveries. American has 42 of these jets on order, but Boeing's production line has been plagued by quality control checks, FAA oversight, and slow certification processes. Delivery timelines that were originally mapped out for 2023 and 2024 have slipped further. This has left American short on the aircraft it planned to deploy on long-haul routes. These Dreamliners were supposed to be the backbone of transatlantic and Pacific expansion, but with fewer planes arriving, American has been forced to reshuffle schedules. Plus, they have to lean on older aircraft. That leads to the second issue, an aging wide-body fleet. American still operates around 47 Boeing 777-200ERS. Some are more than 20 years old. These planes remain reliable workhorses, but they burn more fuel and require more maintenance compared to new generation models. Downtime for scheduled overhauls is longer, and unexpected mechanical issues can throw entire schedules into chaos. Every year that replacements are delayed, operating costs climb. Maintenance expenses for older jets spike and eat into margins that are already thin. Then there is the financial pressure. American Airlines carries over $38 billion in total debt. This is one of the heaviest burdens in the industry, and it's a hangover from the pandemic when it borrowed heavily to stay afloat. 
Servicing that debt costs billions annually, reducing flexibility when problems like delivery delays pile up. If you add in volatile fuel prices because jet fuel has swung between $2.50 and $3.50 per gallon in recent years, then you can see why operating costs have become unpredictable. Fuel alone can make up nearly 30% of an airline's expenses, meaning even small price jumps can wipe out profits on long-haul flights. Operational disruptions are another problem. American has suffered from high-profile meltdowns in the past, like mass cancellations in summer 2021 caused by staffing shortages. Weather is another constant risk, especially with major hubs in Dallas, Miami, and Charlotte, all prone to storms or hurricanes. When your long-haul fleet is already stretched thin, disruptions like these leave even less breathing room. The bottom line is that the delays to the A321 XLR are not happening in isolation. They land on top of a stack of problems that were already dragging American down. Now, if that wasn't enough, American is getting strong competition from its rivals. Competitor check. United Airlines had big dreams for the Airbus A321 XLR. Back in 2019, it joined American in ordering 50 of the long-range narrowbodies, betting on them to finally replace the aging 757s and to serve those long, thin routes across the Atlantic that don't justify a 787. The plan was great on paper. Newark to smaller European cities, Washington to secondary hubs, routes where a wide body burns too much fuel, but demand is too strong to ignore. That was the pitch. But the execution was where things started to become clear. By late 2024, United Insiders were still hoping the first A321 XLR would join the fleet in early 2026. Then, during the airline's June 2025 earnings call, executives had to admit the truth that the timeline slipped. Now the best they can promise is summer 2026 for the first arrival. One more year of waiting. That's the airline industry for you. Years of hype, endless promises, and then the announcement that delays are ongoing. And don't forget, United already has 50 of these jets on order. Every extra month without them means another season where those long haul ambitions are still grounded. Now compare that to JetBlue. While the big boys are stuck waiting on their future fleet, JetBlue decided to just get on with it. Instead of daydreaming about the A321 XLR, it went with the A321 LR, which is already certified, already flying, and already making money. Starting in 2021, JetBlue boldly launched routes from New York and Boston to London, and today it's flying into both Heathrow and Gatwick. This wasn't a half-hearted trial. It was a full entry into the transatlantic game, and it worked. JetBlue's secret weapon is Mint Suites. These are fully private business class pods with sliding doors, modern finishes, and smart design. Essentially, they are everything American wanted its XLR cabin to be. But the difference is that JetBlue actually has them in the air. Reviews have been glowing, photos circulate constantly, and passengers rave about comfort levels on what's technically still a narrow body jet. That kind of PR is priceless, and JetBlue didn't have to spend years hyping it. It just delivered, and the numbers prove it's not just a vanity project, JetBlue reported its transatlantic revenue jumped 34% year over year, hitting around $1.2 billion in 2024. On top of that, unit revenues climbed more than 20% on these routes. That's not a gimmick, that's hard cash. By mid-2025, JetBlue had grabbed over 5% of the New York-London market and about 14% between Boston and London. Not domination, sure, but enough to make travelers rethink who they book with. The irony is that JetBlue is still a relatively small player in the U.S. market, with just 3.6% share overall. Its fleet numbers just over 300 planes compared to Americans 900 plus. Yet when it comes to brand perception on the Atlantic, JetBlue feels like the one leading the charge. Passengers think of it as the cool new option, the airline that somehow pulled off affordable luxury without waiting for Airbus to solve its problems, and that memory sticks. Business travelers especially like consistency. Once they have flown Mint a few times and liked it, they are less eager to gamble on another airline's upcoming product. Meanwhile, American and United can only watch. American's first XLR is technically delivered, but sitting in storage in Czechia because it doesn't have certified seats. United, for its part, is now openly saying 2026 before the first one even arrives. Passengers don't care about excuses, they care about what they can book today. And today, it's JetBlue that has the goods. That's what makes this situation so fascinating. The two giants thought they were buying themselves a head start on the future. Instead, they are stuck in limbo while a smaller rival is cashing in. American and United still have the size, the hubs, and the global networks, 
but right now JetBlue has the story everyone is talking about. But that doesn't mean American cannot make a comeback with its A321 XLR. The future of the A321 XLR the future of the Airbus A321 XLR is still full of promise, even if the rollout has been slower and messier than anyone imagined. Airbus designed this jet to fly 4,700 nautical miles, giving it the longest range of any single-aisle aircraft ever built. That means routes like Philadelphia to Rome, Boston to Athens, or Miami to Northern Europe will be possible without needing a wide body. It's revolutionary if you think about it, and airlines know it. By 2025, there were already over 450 orders from carriers worldwide. That's part interest, yes, but that's also demand locked in. For American Airlines, the optimistic story is that the first A321 XLR will enter service by the end of 2025. That's the best case line the airline has been giving. But let's be honest, the more likely timeline drifts into 2026, especially when you factor in the supply chain mess, the seat certification process, and the domino effect of late deliveries. United has already accepted this reality, pushing its own debut to summer 2026. The big question is whether all these delays will dull the shine of the XLR. JetBlue has already proven that narrow bodies can cross the Atlantic in style with its A321LR. By the time American and United finally launch their XLRS, passengers may shrug and think that they have seen that before. That's the risk. Still, the aircraft itself remains a huge deal. Lower fuel burn, smaller crews, and the ability to serve secondary cities mean it can reshape route maps for decades to come. When it finally gets going, it will matter. But for now, the future of the XLR feels like a waiting game. So what do you think? Will the Airbus A321 XLR still live up to its hype? Share your opinions with us in the comments below. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss the latest aviation updates. We will keep you in the loop. Goodbye for now.